I am joined by one of the greatest photographers in the history of the United States, ladies and gentlemen, Douglas Kirkland. Douglas, we are standing in what is probably the most famous series of photographs you've ever done, although you have several in here, Marilyn Monroe in bed. You know, uh, it was for when I was at Look Magazine and I'd been there just a little over a year and I was asked to photograph Marilyn for that edition. Mm. And Marilyn said, I know what we should do. We should have a bed, white silk sheet. I won't wear anything but the white silk sheet. Frank Sinatra Records and Dom Perignon Champagne. We got together in a studio in Hollywood. We did about 70 or 80. Of all these pictures here of Marilyn, you'll see, this was her favorite. You know what she said about it? Mm. She said, that girl is like a girl holding a man. It wouldn't just be any man, not just a, a big time director or a, uh, a movie star. She will love the man's man. When we look around here at the gallery of what's on exhibit right now today, every star that you shot in here was shot when they were in their absolute prime. So you were with the biggest stars in the world when they were at their height. And you were such a lucky man because when you came on the scene, you worked for Look for about 11 years, then you worked for Life. But this was in the glory times of photojournalism. To you know, I, I've been very lucky. Photographers like myself, we had a form of power. This is uh, Anne Margaret, and she had a show that she was doing in Las Vegas. She had a, what we used to call a chopper. The story must be that you have to be in a precarious position in order to shoot this photo right here. Well, look at her hair blowing. Look at the rush of air, the ground on her. She's not being towed. She's driving this on her own. She's doing it, and my wife, Francoise, drove me in the back of a Fairlane convertible that we had. I was in the trunk. I propped it open. We were got to about 60 miles an hour and I just kept bringing her closer and closer and I had about six frames left in the camera and I said, okay Anne Margaret, we got it. And she said, wee, and she spread her legs out like that. I would never have asked anybody to do that. It was much too dangerous. Jack liked to play and uh, I arrived at his house, which was not very far from where we live now in the Hollywood Hills. What I like to do is, if I can, I like to talk to my subjects, as you do, Eric. You very, make everybody comfortable. Because I don't make the picture, we make it together. Uh, we took a number of pictures and they looked good, but at a certain point, he stuck the match in his mouth. He said, I think I'll smoke a match. And he just did that, like that, and that look, there it is. So when press time came, they put this on the cover, and that was their best-selling issue of, of that entire year. That's, that's what I remember here with Jack. In 1966, who was bigger than the Beatles? And here's a great shot of John Lennon, and we got Ringo in 69. Tell us these stories, Douglas. John Lennon was making a movie called How I Won the War about an inept private in the uh, British Army, and he was almost losing the war for Britain rather than winning it. <laughs> Sometimes you just see something. Many of these pictures have been prepared, and uh, you work at them and refine them. In this case, the interesting thing about this picture is John was about 20 or 30 feet away from me and I had a telephoto lens and I just, I just saw him in the camera and I said, hey John, and that's the look I got. So sometimes pictures happen, but here's uh, Ringo here, this is quite different. Mm -hmm. This is a, quite a prepared picture, this was done at Apple Records in London and I was doing a story on him, he was making a film called The Magic Christian and uh, Again, we wanted to make things different, exciting. Uh, what, what you'd done last week or last month didn't matter. Do it now, make it different. So we shot with a certain type of film called infrared color. All right, let's move right over here. We've got a fantastic, I love this one. It's Bridget Bardot, who was a goddess in 1965. And you, Douglas, are on the floor, eye to eye, with the sexiest woman around. She was making a movie in Mexico, and uh, so United Artists said we would like our man there. 
I walked into Brigitte's dressing room one day and she was playing solitaire. And so I, just playing around like photographers do, sometimes do, I laid down to get a better angle on her. And then as I went down, she went down further. And so we both ended up on our stomachs on the floor. Francois is my wife. We've been together 50 years now, and we have a wonderful life together, and she's very involved in my work. Francoise came over from Paris, and I was working in London. I was working on a Charlie Chaplin's last movie called Countess from Hong Kong, and with people like Brando in it and mm -hmm. Sophia Loren and others. Mm -hmm. It was four in the morning, and I just said to Francoise, let me go out and show you the, the city. And so I had a small 35 millimeter camera on, with a very wide lens on it, and I said, let's make a picture of ourselves. And I squeezed her, stuck the camera out. As Francoise recently said, this was called the long, long arm picture. The word selfie had not been uh. invented. Dear Elizabeth really started my career. I was with her on many occasions and I was around when she was with Richard Burton. Were they bickering? Uh, they were bickering all the time. I had two daughters back in New Jersey, and I used to put their heads together and play with them. But it sort of describes their relationship. There's a closeness, but there's a butting of the heads. Yeah. I gotta tell you, Douglas, this has been amazing. Thank you for spending time with us. I know you've got a, a lot of people out there that want to meet you, and for you to take the time with us uh, is one of the most special times I think I've been Eric, doing this it's, show. It's been great oh. talking with you, yeah. and I love it, and I love it here at Casa Romantico.